would be curious, the sort of the makeup of the room. And how many people here are writers, mostly writers, I'm guessing? Oh, OK. <laughs> and how about, uh, how many of you would sort of consider yourself newer writers or waiting to get the first break kind of writers? OK, so it just helps me a little bit in terms of knowing you. Then writers, that's why they're not at parties. <laughs> so did you want to um, tell them how many parties we've gone to? Yeah. This is it. <laughs> yeah, so actually the onus is on you guys to make this uh, fun for them. So, so uh, did you have something you want to maybe start off with saying? Um, I just, I have, Bob and I have one remark. I've been elected to, uh, to mention here tonight, and it's what I say whenever we are at any kind of gathering like this, Bob Lou and I are writers. We actually consider this a profession. It was never anything we were doing until we could become producers or directors. Uh, we don't write so that we have something to produce, so that we'll have our own film to direct. We write because that's what we actually are, and we actually consider this a worthy career for grown-ups. Um, it, uh, it, it is the only of, of the crafts that people will say to you, I'll exp explain what we do, and they'll say, uh, so you just write. <laughs> uh, yes, we just write. That's, that's all we're capable of. We, we're kind of handicapped in that. Uh, you know, we have parking in that. <laughs> no one ever says to anybody, you just direct. But they do say, they say that to us. So uh, I make that clear to start with. Writing means a great deal to us. We did not become writers so that we could get into the entertainment business. We became writers so we could write. Uh, the, the other thing is we will probably not uh, tell you really any um, of the typical writer horror stories about how only the writers are, 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 are have any brains at all and how everybody else makes our lives miserable all the time. Uh, that has become kind of, it goes way back even before our time. That is, that is the, the old time, long time writer's lament. Studios, actors, producers, directors, they all conspire to ruin whatever it is we're trying to do. We don't, that's, that's actually not our point of view. Um, our, our successful movies are successful to a great extent because we work with the right people. And uh, our less successful movies are, uh, we are at least as responsible as, as any other element in, in the process for them being less successful. Uh, so that's, that's it. Anything? That's it. Okay. <laughs> There's no one more. Well, that's about all the time we have. Well, thank you. Uh, so, well, this guy keeps aiming at my crotch. I'm just kidding. Is he with you guys? Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, how did you guys, just a few, some basic ones, first of all. How did you meet? How did you start out? Uh, that, that's two questions. That's all I have. Okay. <laughs> I got nothing else. Uh, we started out separately. Yes. Uh, odd thing. We both, we both grew up in New York. And, uh, and we spent the summers, unbeknownst to each other, like half a block away from each other, never met, or did, but uh, did don't know, know it. And, and well, if I would have seen him in shorts, I would have remembered Yeah, him. yeah. <laughs> since it was a summer. Yeah. Uh, and, we, and we both moved from New York to Los Angeles like within like three or four days of each other. We found out afterwards to try to become writers. Very, uh, just very peculiar kind of bad writing. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't write it that way. It's stupid. Um, and then uh, we, we met in the street. Outside, the, outside the, the comedy store, which is still there on Sunset. But this was pretty soon after it opened. And, and unemployed comedians and comedy writers would stand around on the street making fun of people with jobs. <laughs> <laughs> And just and, amusing each other. And the only time we'd ever go in is if Rodney would go on and do a set, then I would spend 20 minutes pretending to make a phone call in the entryway. So we could so hear Rodney Dangerfield do his act. Right. Yeah. 
Uh, and then that, that's, actually, that's actually how we met it. You just find sometimes that you have these kind of shared references and sort of worship the same. Billy Wilder, I.L. Diamond. Yeah, you know, the Marx Brothers. You just, yeah. you know, and you, and you just uh, you have a million things to talk about. And uh, that was kind of the start. And that's when we fell in love. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first thing you wrote? Well, movie. Well, we actually we actually worked in TV together. For, I, I had I had actually kind of a, a a pretty serious TV career for about seven or eight years. I mean, you know, really just immersed in it. I had I had a partner before before that a guy, my college buddy. But I killed him. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> and. and um, and, and we worked at TV, and then, and then when we met uh, Bob Lou, we always tried to get him to work on t in TV with us, but he was, he was determined to be a screenwriter, so and he was never When I was a kid, I just wanted to write movies. I wasn't a snob, I just wanted to write movies, and then about 30 seconds after I got married, my wife said, you're writing TV, I want a house. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so he, came, he came to work, actually, uh, on the shows we, we were doing, and then uh, my partner and I, Broke up, and uh, I think we, we wrote like a half a pilot together yes. once. Yeah. Uh, but we, I mean, we'd all, we all we had, we had worked together in TV without being partners. We were like you know on the same writing staff. Uh, but Night Shift was was the first really ser you know big thing that we that we tried to write as a team. And we wrote that during the time we were working on Happy Days. Yes, I, 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 I had amount of time. Yeah, because we yes we wrote it on their time in their offices. Yeah, uh, for their us. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but we, we, we kept our TV job because I you know the great believer don't don't let go of one rug of the ladder until you get the other foot up there. Otherwise you yeah, well, he said come to Happy Days and then two days later Ron Howard quit. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 that's right. Yes. I invited him to come work on the staff at Happy Days, right? The same week Ron Howard quit the show. So we started writing a movie. Yeah. <laughs> so now it makes sense. Huh? Yeah, that's right. Now I got yeah. <laughs> so you guys uh, you wrote Night Shift then, and then clearly you've been writing together since then. Was the plan once you were writing that, okay, let's do this for good together? I don't think so. I mean, I never had a plan in my for my career at all. Which I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't, uh, but I, I, I always was sort of uh, passive. I, you know, I, I'd be offered a job and do the job, and then somebody hopefully would offer me another job. But I never had like, well, within two years or five years, I should. I didn't. Say, I mean, how I actually got from TV to features, I. I it was working on Happy Days when Ron was still on the show, Ron Howard, and one night we were doing pickup shots real late at night, and I was standing there next to him, and he turned to me and he said, uh, uh, I'm going to direct movies. Are you going to write movies? <laughs> and I just sort of instinctively said, uh, well, if, if you'll direct them, I'll write them. And, and then like a year or so went by, and I heard from him, he said, you know, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> I said, no, no, I, I know you're serious. You know, he, he was a very kind of focused guy, the opposite of. of and Brian Grazer shows up and says, I'm going to produce movies. <laughs> yes. But, but they, they called and they said they had this idea, this little notion based on an article they'd read in the paper. I was still working in TV. We both were. And, and, and uh, did you do it? And I said, yeah, but I think I should do it with a partner because I've, I, I, I've only written 23 minutes at a time. In my whole life, I've never written anything <laughs> that, that lasts longer than 23 minutes. Uh, and and I, I knew that, that uh, Bob Lou had, as he says it, had, his whole life had had that dream. And I said, well, you know, let's, let's, uh, we'll, we'll try this together. And I don't think either of us knew how it would, no. if we, you know, we'd be effective really as a team or, or what. But, you know, we, we, it just, we enjoyed it tremendously. Um, you know, besides whether or not the movie, anybody enjoyed the movie, we enjoyed the process. Uh, so, you know, then at that point we just said, well, we'll just keep doing this. Uh, and uh, that's... Well, I actually, I think Ben Grazer came to us and said, you know, I have another idea since this one seems to be, you know, was okay. And uh, so that, that was Splash. That was Splash, yeah. yeah. So we were on momentum. 
Yeah, and, and I mean, we're a little unusual. We've, we've been actually a team now for, we just passed 25 years. Silver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, thank you. Uh, and did he get me anything? <laughs> I, I, I feel that every partnership that breaks up, whatever they say, actually breaks up for the same reason. One of the, that what they're really saying to you is, uh, he just didn't appreciate how great everything was that I was saying. Uh, how, however they actually express it, that, that's really what it is. And, and I, I, before anybody asks, you know, why, it's, it's been okay for this long. It just, it, neither one of us just ever felt uh, threatened about if, if that line doesn't get in, then I, I can't enjoy writing this movie. I, I can't be happy. And I, think if, that, if, and, I, and I think that's the beauty of working in television because we learned. Uh, yes, we, we learned disposability. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, it's funny, I, I worked with a partner who, with whom I had worked in theater. I, I, he directed and I had written. And we had some success, and it kind of confused us in the film business. We got really rattled, in fact, and had a big falling out, uh, during which time we were fired from a job, and we both commented later when we became good friends again uh, that the experience for each of us was neutral because my pain at having been fired myself was offset at my joy that he had been fired. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lovely story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, the pain I mean, thinks this is therapy. <laughs> <laughs> my wife and I are having an issue as well. <laughs> I was hoping that maybe you guys could help. Sure. <laughs> I, I, mean, but, I mean, we really, we really did. TV was just a great, a great teacher. I mean, just in, in just not getting emotional about about material. You know, uh, that, that uh, uh, I, had a, I had a I had a writing boss, uh, you know, uh, Harvey Miller, passed since then. I I had writer who would just, you know, who would, who would just say, you know, uh, love nothing, boys. And he didn't really mean that literally, because there's a fine line between, you know, flexibility and hackiness. Uh, and we've all, from time to time, stumbled over that line. Uh, but he he was trying to teach us a good lesson that that if you, when you start thinking like, this is the last good line I'll ever write, or you know, it, it's if, if if people don't get to hear this idea for this scene or this moment or then then i'm i'm you know it, it, i i've been i've really been cut off in some way uh, and and that's i think the biggest problem that people have writing with a partner is that they bring that um they bring that idea with them uh that if they're ever kind of um restricted or stifled by not being able to, you know, express every every everything everything they think is a wonderful moment that that it spoils the writing experience, and I, I think we've just been lucky that neither of us approaches the work that way. And we are the first ones to say, please cut that line when when, when we're in post production. Where is oh, we're the work we're the most brutal in the editing room. The, I mean, there's no director or studio. Uh, exec who is more, was harsher than we are. We, we would rather have no joke than a medium joke. Uh, I mean, we, we just, uh, we can't say, because part of it is that we'll, we'll be hearing that bad joke the rest of our lives. <laughs> That'll be on film forever. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we just, we, we're pretty tough about it. How do you deal with uh, disagreeing about creative issues between each other? We don't usually have any. Seriously, we just, it's all discussion. It's, I don't think we, you know what? If, if there's a major chasm, there's something wrong with the, uh, we're, you know, I swear we are like two, two oxen pulling the same car. Yeah, I, I, we never present ideas to each other like, I got it. Or, you know. Because <laughs> I got it is setting you up for something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I worked with a writer who used to get so excited as a TV. He'd leap from a seating seated, seated position. We were all younger then. And <laughs> would land out in the middle of the floor on I Got It. And sometimes he didn't have it. And that's, <laughs> a, that's a long walk back. You know, that's, a, that's a lonely walk back. Because you don't cut to a commercial. <laughs> Uh, but we, we always go, I mean, we literally come at each other like this, and I'm not kidding. We, we come at you like, what if, or is this anything? Or, okay, this isn't it, but. You know what I mean? And that is, that is literally how we talk to each yeah. other when we're writing. It's not feeling so right. Yeah. Or, or if, if somebody actually says a joke, no one, the other one doesn't actually have to say, that's not it. Uh, the temperature in the room changes when it's not the joke. I don't know how to describe it, but whoever said it no longer feels that they've actually said anything good. <laughs> and and you, just, you just move on. Uh, I, I, you know, it's not like we're so full of ego, we're so prolific, we can come up with 30 jokes for any moment or any occasion. I, I, I also use the word joke generically to mean any moment in a script. It isn't necessarily a joke moment. It, uh, but, you know, we always just go, well, we'll, we'll just keep coming at it. The most of these is we'll get to a point and one of us will try something again. So, but, Man, that's why I was thinking back then, 20 minutes ago, that you know maybe that's our, yeah, but you'd have to go that way with it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what I meant. Yeah, you know, but there's, we just don't wrestle over this stuff. Do because uh, frankly, there's so much money involved. <laughs> <laughs> so talk talk about that. Well, not the money, but the day. Your day. Oh, our day. Yeah. Um, well, we take it a little easier now than we did, say, 15 or 20 years ago. Yeah, I'll say. Yeah. <laughs> um, Many kids have graduated college. Yeah. Um, uh, well, we, we come in and uh, we read the paper a little. <laughs> what time are we talking? <laughs> 10, 10, 30. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we, we read the paper a little bit. Sometimes, like. yeah. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes we make jokes about, about it, and then we, we build ourselves up to reading yesterday's pages. That, that's, that's the first actual piece of work, because to go back to the previous day, when we're done, we, we write in longhand. You have to understand, we, we write on with a ballpoint pen. So at the end of the day, we give this mess to our assistant. And when we come in the next day, it's typed. And, and that serves a couple of purposes. One, we have to do less work. And, but more importantly, it feels new to us. I mean, it feels like we're reading something for the first time. It's in a different format. It just, it just feels different. Uh, so we read it, uh, and we play with that, probably till about lunchtime. We, we will play with yesterday's pages. Uh, after lunch, we, we will start usually on, on a new scene, uh, talking about it. We, we kind of know what the next scene should be, either because we've actually literally outlined it, or at least we can, we can sort of feel where we're, where we're going. And we'll talk about it for, until we feel ready to start writing dialogue. Uh, and then we will and so on and so forth every day, every week for 25 years. <laughs> Do you guys end your day after a certain number of pages, after a certain time, after a certain? Um, usually at the end of a scene, if we just don't feel we have the energy to start the process all over again for a new scene, although very often we will talk about the next scene, right. jot down sort of, uh, just put like dots, like connect the dots. We'll put down the dots for the next day uh, on, a, on a piece of paper so that we're not going to be starting cold the next day. We'll talk, and that's fun. We'll, we'll sort of bat jokes around, and we'll, we'll, we'll jot the jokes in the margin, too, which we may not use, but they're there. 
uh, and I go, well, you know, what, what did we say yesterday? What did we talk about? Oh, you, you, you said that funny thing about, about something. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right, right. The energy was he came in and he locked the door and he put the music on and he started to, you know, yeah, 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 that, that, yeah we, we, we were on to something. That was something. And, you know, and then actually try to, you know, turn it into, into writing. So you, let's say, you, like going back then, the beginning of the process then, you have an idea. Someone either brings it to you or you guys have it. And Most cases, somebody brings it to us. Okay, let's bring you an idea. Uh, two questions in stages. What makes you decide you can do it, you want to do it? Then the second is, once you've decided, what's the step from there? But why don't we start with the first one? They're very connected. How to do it and how we decide we want to do it are, are really uh, joined at the hip. Um, most of the movies we've written, somebody has just said something to us. They've said, uh, you know... Uh, Three men go on a cattle truck. Yeah. Uh, and, and we go, we go oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's going to be funny, yeah. Yeah. And then we, we, we take it back to our office and we talk about it for a few days. And that process is almost always finding the person. The voice. Finding the main voice in the movie. Who, the, the, whose point of view. Who is taking us on this journey? And it's almost always in one form or another us. Um, even, let's say, I'll go the farthest to feel, the league of their own. That's a good example, in fact. Okay, I'm on to something here. <laughs> because A League of Their Own is about two young women from Oregon during World War II. And we are two guys from New York who grew up in the 60s. But that story was about us, because them getting on that train to go to Chicago to become baseball was players was us coming to California to become writers. Uh, and, and in some form or another, we are always trying to find ourselves uh, within that movie. So we, we, we start to hear that voice of that character and what his issue is, what his problem, his or her problem is, what, what the concern is, and we start to see kind of vaguely a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it's, it's, we're getting interested in it, and then we go back to whoever told us that sentence and we say, if we were going to write this movie, we would write it kind of this way. What do you think of that? Does that make you happy? Do you, you, know, do you still want us to do it? And they go, yeah, that sounds great. That, that, that sounds really good. Then we go, well, then I think we'll probably do it. Uh, you know, and, and then we'll get more specific and really, you know, really try to try to break it, you know, and, and have it so that we could come back and really, you know, pitch a story, pitch a, you know, pitch a movie. But we want to make sure we're, we're stepping off in the right direction. Uh, now, people who write on spec will have a completely different process. We, we just came up through the business differently, writing through TV and, and um, I, it's, I'm not, I'm not, it's not a boast that we don't write on, on spec. That there's nothing, because people know. Yes, yeah. that's exactly what it is. We just, <laughs> we also tend not to come up with, or even get involved with, through somebody else's idea, these kind of surefire hit ideas. Every, every successful movie we've had was referred to as a sleeper before I came in. None of them were kind of, oh, here it comes, you know, make room, get everything else out of the theaters because this is coming. <laughs> you know, we, we, it's just never been our, I don't put, I, I'm, not, I'm not negative about those kind of movies, it's just we, for whatever reason, we've never gravitated towards them. So we, we've never felt like we would do very well writing on, on, on spec, that people would look at our scripts after we finished and go, at best, they'd go, yeah, you guys are funny. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a cute movie, you know, but nobody would go, holy crap, this is going to make a billion dollars, you know, so, so we, we've always, and, and part of it is we like that sense that somebody besides us is interested in this subject. Yes, yes. the energy is coming from somewhere, the enthusiasm, someone's going to share. It's sharing, it's being shared with us, and it's not, it's not just us. I, I, 
It, it's just our nature. So let's say now you decided, you know, the person said, yeah, I like the way you're going to do it. Now you're, you know, more or less committed to doing it. Then what happens? Well, it depends. If, that, if, if, that's, if that's a studio or somebody who can, you know, get a, get a green light, then, you know, we, we move on from there. And I'll get to, you know, the creative part. Said, if, if not, sometimes we have to take the movie around and pitch it. You know, we, we have to take meetings. We have to do the dance. We do the dance. We have to we have to get up there and uh, you know and then shoot shoot light you know rockets up in the air and then and, and, and make people laugh and talk dirty and you know just anything that, that makes a good show in the, in the room. I'd actually like to talk about that because I find that excruciating painful having to go in and talk to people, especially about stuff that I, the more I care about it, it seems weirdly harder it is for me, the more I don't want to screw it up or I don't want it to be misheard or something. And, and, we've, and we've never been excited about being the lead element, like, like w that, that we're better known and, and have more cachet than any other element that, that's coming into pitch. We're, we're always happier if, 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 if we're to, to be tag-alongs. Uh, you know that there that there is a star, a director. You know, I, I I mean we're happier if we don't have to go to the meeting. You know, if, if I mean if, if Ron and Brian, for instance, you know, or, or uh, you know, will we'll, you know come back from the meeting and say, well, we pitched it in here. This seems to be their only big concern. And, and you know, and we go, well, what do you think of their big concern? Go, well, we think you should address their big concern. Would make our lives easier. And go, okay, we'll address that big concern, you know. But, uh, but I, I don't have to be there to like, you know, just go what, what, what? you know. It, it's, I, I mean, it, it's uh, so uh, it, it's it, it can be it it, it can be pretty uh, pretty excruciating. There's, there's there's no question about it. I I you know as far as advice, I mean, we 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 actually do. Try to be entertaining. I mean, I, you know, I, and I know that's BS because it's 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 only what's on the page. The, the audience is going. to I hear these guys were hilarious when they pitched this movie. You know, that, that's that's not. You know. So film that. Yeah. You know, it's like those other writers who write a lot of funny stage direction. You know, to make like great references to arcane you know subject matter. So it's not in the movie, but uh, the. Uh, but you know we do we, we, we try to entertain them and, and just uh, get them laughing and, and you know and and, uh, and and be and be real open also about stuff and, and it's hard because I my nature is, is to be kind of defensive and and I, I have to I have to kind of fight that and I, and I I mean I not to be indelicate but I've perspired through my clothing at these meetings you know what I mean it's it, it's, it's it's pretty very, bad it's very implied. we've just gone through it yeah, we've just gone through it. We, we, you do the dance, and you just you go down here. You can just feel it. You know it. Yeah. Although oh, that's actually the worst. You're like one third of the way through, and you go, and you go, and you go we're not making a sale oh, here. <laughs> and I, I, do I have to finish? Should, should, I, should I, should I, fake the heart attack to carry him now? What is the way? What's happened to him? Let me get him to yes, the seniors. <laughs> oh no, no. I mean, I mean, it's it's brutal. I. I but you know, again, I, 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 it sounds like I'm a broken record, but talking about TV, but TV was great. TV was great, because you know, we'd go in and pitch pilots, and you'd have to pitch the episode, it's each episode each week to the star of the show, make sure he or she liked that episode, and, and, and they'd go, this, this isn't working, so you, you'd stand up like right in the middle of the week. The show was shooting Friday, and on Wednesday, you saw this, <laughs> You'd get up and, and, and do that dance for them. No, no, but here's how we'll fix it tonight. While you're sleeping, we'll think, and we'll come this way, you know, and we'll come around through the roof. And, you know, so, I mean, we really kind of, we learned more than writing. I mean, you know, we, we learned uh, fear, I guess. <laughs> we learned, um, did that answer, did that answer any question that's been asked? Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Uh, it actually raises several, but I want to, I'm not sure which one to ask. Let me ask, since we're on the TV thing. A lot of television writers cannot transition to movies. They, you know, you, you learn certain 
skills that you're talking about, but why do you think people can't make that transition? Well, it, it's, um, we, uh, first of all, let me say, I, all I ever wanted to do was be a TV writer. I mean, his dream was to be a movie writer. I thought I'd be happy writing TV for, for 40 years if they let me. I was a TV kid. You know, to me, it was like the, the Dick Van Dyke show, and that was it. That, that, was, that was like the best thing that had ever been done by anyone, and that's, that, that's all I knew. But, but uh, we did kind of, without giving ourselves more credit than we deserve, we were always trying to write TV, again, from the point of view of the character rather than from the point of view of the, uh, just of the situation. I mean, it, it was always kind of the, the why. Why is he, why is the character saying that? Why is the character doing that? Because, you know, you take like Slickers. It's just an easy, you could have gone easy with that and just, you know, the, the biggest compliment was, you know, there was stuff in there I wouldn't have predicted or I couldn't have, it, it was just, you know, the stuff with the, the videotaping and all, just, it, it went off on interesting tangents. Yeah, yeah, somebody, somebody said to us about Slick, they said, when I, when I heard the premise, I thought I knew every joke in it in advance before I saw the movie. Uh, and then I saw it. Well, I, I could have written it in about, yeah, yeah. I go, he, yeah. See, he said, I could have written this movie in a half an hour, but bad. <laughs> you know, just, it, it, but, I mean, I don't know, I mean, we were, we were very lucky in that we were actually part of the first and on, maybe only generation where people were jumping out of TV into features like crazy in the early 80s. Um, you know, it, 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 it was like the one time that like the movie business like discovered TV di directors and writers. I mean, everybody I worked with in TV became a, TV, became a feature director. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it was, uh, Ron and Penny and, 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 and Rob Reiner and, and, and Henry Durant, you know, you know and it was, uh, they, they, really, they really welcomed us. Uh, but, I mean, I think, you know, TV, it depends what TV. I, I, what was always amazing to me, I guess it's not that amazing in retrospect, was the, um, how, how sort of at the same time the difficulty that so many of the S SNL writers were having going into features. Because they had the most prestige and cachet. We were all, we all had SNL envy <laughs> in, in 1980. You know, it was like, because, I mean, they were the hot writers and, and you know, and plus they, you know, they could call Bill Murray. <laughs> on the phone, you know, <laughs> and get him in a and get him in a movie, or Chevy, or Akbar Belushi while he was around, you know, and and, and Gilda, you know, and, and we and we couldn't, but they they actually, and they were great, they were brilliant, they were brilliant, and and they had, it, it kind of shocked us how how they didn't just take the feature business by storm, but they weren't really writing characters in that in that particular way you know that it, they were writing characters in their schedules but but there, there was it, it was it was a different it was a different kind of of, of character writing this, the point of view of the movie was not with the character as much as yes it was very external yeah conceptual it was style. very very satiric and very external and not committed to the life of that of that character they didn't they didn't love their character, except they loved how funny the character was, but they didn't actually, they, they couldn't actually say, oh my God, I hope his life turns out okay. Uh, which we do. I mean, we, we write these characters. I'm mean, going back to the very first movie, Night Shift. I mean, Night again was about us. We always imagined, I, I mean, I'm, I may be talking to Air here because it's, it's an old movie and not everybody's seen it, but, but um, uh, you know, it's a guy who, uh, he has a civil service job. He works, he works in the city morgue, and he gets hooked up with this other guy who, who, who bizarrely uh, convinces him that they should, they should become pimps and, 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 and run a call girl service using the facilities and the limousines of the, of, of the morgue. And, and our first take, because it was based on an article in the, in, the, in the Daily News in New York, just one paragraph long. Two guys are arrested running a call girl. Yes, because they've been arrested. That's why I got to the papers. 
And our first thought, which I don't know if anybody else would have come at it this way, our first thought was, how could this have happened to us? <laughs> I mean, look at us. We, we would and never do that. How do we wind up there? How do, how we, do wind we wind up, wind up there? <laughs> and, and, so, and you know what? But easy. Yo, oh my god, if, if this comedy thing doesn't work for me, I'm, I'm there. But I mean, we were always saying that we could easily have not become comedy writers. We could have been taking the civil service exam. I, my dad was ready to put another steering wheel in his cab for me. <laughs> <laughs> tried, like like, uh, uh, like Maggie yeah, Simpson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you know, so I don't, we just kind of brought that, and I, I, don't, I don't know. And again, not being boastful was just kind of our natural inclination to think that way, but thinking that way was very suited to the long form. Right. You talked about your phrase, uh, the fine line between flexibility and happiness. And uh, you don't write spec scripts, but you have clearly a bar you're setting for yourself. I'm interested to hear about that line. Uh, well, we know it's a collaborative medium. I mean, you know, we, we can't kid ourselves. We, we're not, we don't have $25 million to make even a low budget movie, you know, a studio level. Uh, so, uh, but I mean, once we get through the process of, of, of selling the movie, I guess is the way to say it, or coming to a basic agreement about what the movie will be, that becomes our time. I mean, we take it back. And, and take anywhere from a month to three months. And uh, that's for us, uh, you know, and, and because we know coming at the other end of the process is once we put it in that tube and send it down to, yeah. out, into the, out into the world, now we're compromising from that point until the movie is released. And you have to be okay with that. I mean, you just have to be. Uh, when I talk about the fine line between flexibility and hackiness is you can't just go, oh, I guess this is what they want, morons. <laughs> you know, that's not writing. But so you try to hear it and, and you know, and go, okay, what is their bottom line here? What is it? There's, there's got to be a way so that mo this movie still interests me, that, I, that I'm, I'm still enjoying it, that it's just as good, but good in a different way. Uh, and, and, and that we haven't broken the spine of it. Once or twice we have broken the spine of our, mo of our the movies. The movie was dead from that point on. Yeah, really bad. Uh, but we could have stopped. We could have said no, or we could have come up with a better idea. We could have fixed it. We could have been brilliant. People will listen to brilliance. You, you don't meet that many really stupid people in, 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 in the movie business. You really don't, despite the funny stories you hear. And, 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 and you don't meet the geniuses either. <laughs> <laughs> and no, no. I, I, no, I, I, did, I, I spent the first 15 years of my career waiting to meet the geniuses. <laughs> You know, and then you just it's a lot of hardworking people doing the best they can. Uh, but but on, on those ones where we allow the spine of the movie to be broken, we could have come up with a better idea. I know we could have, and we could have sold it. We could have come back and asked for another meeting and said, how about this? But we didn't. We, we, we weren't, we either didn't have the energy or the brains or the talent, you know? And, and uh, every, we, we just ran into our limit. And, and it's not our inclination to quit. It's our, it, we're, we're more inclined to, uh, to lie to ourselves than quit. If we're, if, we're, if, if, we're gonna, if, if we're gonna make a mistake in one direction or the other, I think we're, we're more inclined to, to screw ourselves up that way. Uh, which in the long term is probably the better way because you actually don't make enemies. Uh, but you know you don't storm out of meetings and, and crap like that. Uh, but uh, you know, but but I, I mean I I consider that kind of like a big part of uh, for, forgive me for a pretentious word uh, a talent. Uh, I I consider that like actually kind of a serious aspect of of what we bring, the fact that we can kind of. Um,
puzzle those things out in a way that, that we're not kind of just throwing in the towel, uh, but you're just going, um, we, we, we've hit a spot that has to be, that has to be dealt with. This, this situation has to be accommodated. And it's not just studios, it's, it's the direct, somebody with whom we're very close. If we, we've done a lot of movies, well, Ron Howard's name comes up again. Okay, but, but we're really close friends. I mean, we, we get along very well. He never lays down the law to us. He never says, you know, either do this or I'm hiring new writers. It, it, we don't get ultimatums from him, but you see that he doesn't believe in this particular aspect of the script. He just doesn't believe in it. And we've tried for two days to get him to believe in it. And he's not that rigid a person normally, so he never is going to believe in that. We've got to come up with something else. Sometimes he will, or he'll at least give us the inkling of a new way to do it. But, but we have to. Um, I, I, it, it's now I'm depressed <laughs> <laughs> because I'm flashing back. <laughs> yeah, there's been some bad moments. Yeah, because you know what? There are certain movies out there. My kids go, I didn't know you wrote that. <laughs> yeah, tell you <laughs> <laughs> the Comedy Channel early on. You know, yeah, the early years of the Comedy Channel. Yeah. Those are the only movies they could afford. The show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are there examples where those kinds of situations led to pleasant surprises, uh, you know, and things in movies that are really memorable? A million. I mean, I don't even know where to, where to start. I, as I said in my, in my preamble, <laughs> um, uh, a pre-ramble, the, the, uh, the, the directors, producers, actors, are constantly coming up with things that, that you, you just look at, you go, I, I, I had no idea that was, I mean, one scene we wrote, we were on Parenthood, we were on our way to a rehearsal. And Ron was sitting in the van and he just said, uh, this is a good scene. Just, he said, it just feels a little incomplete. He said, there's something incomplete about it. It, 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 it was a scene between Jason Robards and Tom Hulse, and he said, uh, it, it gets the job done, it says what you want to say, but it doesn't resonate like so many of your other scenes in this movie where we really feel like it was born out of this family. I said, work on that. And we, we just started talking, not writing, but by the time we got to the location, we said to Ron, um, uh, is this anything like what you mean? And he said, uh, yeah, get a pencil. R write, write, write some of those lines down. And we did, and after they rehearsed the scene, he gave them to one copy to Mr. Robards and Mr. Hulse, and they kind of looked over it, and he said, he said, just read it. And they're br brilliant actors, and they started to read it, but really, not just read it, I mean, they started to, and, and we, we which would, inspired us. Right. Yeah, because we were just standing there going, did we, did we write any of that? I mean, we did, because then we looked and we said, yes, some of them, we, we gave them that, those ideas, but it had, just, it, it had just gone somewhere where we never would have written it. We never would have written it that way. And every time I've seen the movie since, I've loved that, that scene. If you ever see it, it's just that moment where they're, they're fighting about They're in the garage. They're in the garage. They're talking about uh, how Tom Hulse has made such a mess of his life. And he turns on the father and he, and he says, in better writing than this, I am what you made me. I, I you know, you, I'm, I'm Don't not. Don't be a number. Yeah, well, how many times did you tell me this, this, this? And James Robinson, you weren't listening. That's not what I meant. And, you know, and, and, and they were, you know, it, it's, it's just we, we had just fallen in with, with, with brilliance. You know, he, Jason Robards had done a similar scene in a, in a garage with, with, uh, Ralph Richardson had Log Day's Journey of Tonight, I realized many years later when I saw it. <laughs> Except he was the son, and, and uh, O'Neill was actually a little better. But we were funny. <laughs> we were funny. <laughs> funny uh, and my mother was on morphine also. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, so I mean, you just constantly, you just, just fall into these kind of, 
you, you, well, you, you know what? We're, same movie. Grazer says, you keep saying he's a great father. He's a great father. Show me. So we went off to lunch and said, all right. And, and we, we wrote the Cowboy Gilsey, right. which had not been in our original script, just, just because the producer said, you're, you're short a scene here. Uh, yes, we believe he's a great father because he's Steve Martin and everybody loves him and can imagine he'd be a great father. But where do I experience it? Where is the visceral moment? And we went, yeah, he, he's and right. Then, and then we encountered another problem because we created this. You go, oh, you wrote a scene specifically for oh, Steve yeah. Martin. Yeah. No, we yeah. wrote the scene. <laughs> yes. They cast Steve yeah. Martin. Yes, Steve, Steve said, I love the script. I just don't want to do the cowboy scene. Yeah. I said, why? We were shocked. He says, because everybody will say I made you write that for me. He says, like, like, like they were expecting that wild and crazy guy. Stupid old yeah. Steve Martin still doing his act from Disneyland. That's what he, that, that's what he worried that, that Ron had to, had to talk him into doing it. Did, um, do you guys ever, when you're, oh, what percentage of your working life is starting page one, going to the end on a full script? Well, you mean what we work Hebrew, go from backwards to right, yeah. right. <laughs> What percentage? Well, you sound like you're a lot of that. No, um, what percentage is starting in first draft, and what percentage is doing production-oriented rewrites, that kind of thing? First draft, like I say, and now we tend to only write one original script a year. We used to write two. But I, I said a little while ago, we, we're taking a little, we treat ourselves a little nicer now. Yeah, till death. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so really now, we tend to only spend, like I say, it's anywhere from one to three months. Maybe we'll do one and a half a year, you know, be flop over. So maybe some in a big year, we're doing three or four months of original writing, but that would be a lot. That would actually be a lot. The rest is all is rewrites, either rewriting our own stuff or um, we're hired from time to time to be, uh, you know, what we call funny for money. Uh, <laughs> script doctors. Script doctors. Uh, none of our names appear on any of those ever. Uh, other writers do put their names on those. We never arbitrate or, or ask for credit on our, uh, on our, uh, our uh, ghost material. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, no, a majority of our time is not spent in that original first kind of uh, creative push. Do, uh, when you're working on those things, the funny for money jobs, do you, are they as stressful or less stressful? No difference? Less fun and less stressful. You can only be a hero. They, they've given you something that's It's not working? working. Right. <laughs> yes, because if they loved it, you, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have the gig. So it, it's, uh, you, you really can only be a hero. Uh, and uh, we're very, you know, we're very, it's like, I, 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 always, I always use this uh, metaphor, but it, it's like um, if, somebody, if somebody else's kid comes over to play at your house, you still watch them carefully. You don't let them fall into the pool. You don't let them run out in traffic and kill themselves. I mean, you, you're responsible. You do, you, you do a good, responsible job. But you, that does not mean you, you have the same emotional investment as you do in your own, in your own children. Uh, so that's why it, it's, I mean, it's an important part of our careers. We make a lot of connections that way. You know, we, we nurture a lot of professional relationships by doing the, those jobs. We, we, we make a lot of income doing those jobs. I mean, they're very important. We take them very seriously. But we're not. Um, no, because I literally, I, I consider us the bait. They, we rewrite the script. They landed the director. They got such and such. We've done our job. The studio is ecstatic. Thank you, fellas. And then they bring in their people. Yes, let's say so-and-so actor, so-and-so director <laughs> agreed to do this movie now because of your rewrite, and, and that, that, that's it. And then we go away, and then usually another rewrite gets done after us. So if we see the movie, you know, we find just like little, little pockets of, of, of our material. But the, 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 the people who employed us are still delighted because we were, we were, a, key, we were a key step in the process. Were there times in your careers, I'm guessing more early on, or you just thought, I just don't know what I'm doing here. Or do you still feel that? Uh, mm. Here tonight? <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. 
no, I mean, I mean, without without being full of ourselves, I, I think there's a beautiful thing in working a specific craft for many, many years. It, it's there for you. I mean, not every script is right up our alley. Not every job we do is the best we've we've ever done. But I think when you write as much as we've written over the last 25 years, I, I think there is, a, there is a certain comfort level of, of stripped down to anything. We can just always go back to just basic craftsmanship and, and, and put a decent swing on the ball. I mean, still might, you know, just foul it back into the screen, but I mean, we, we, I, I feel like we always know the, know the basics and how you, how you swing at the pitch. There's a science fiction writer, a British science fiction writer I love named Philip Pullman. And uh, an interview with him, someone asked him, what happens when you're not inspired? And he said, hey, my job is to do it when I'm not inspired. You know, my job is to just still come up with good stuff. And, you know, that's part of the job. But you see, well, there's no mysticism. We, this is a job for us. We get in, we do our work. We it's a great home. job. Yeah, but it's a job. It's a job. No, we we don't we don't wait for you know it's it's there's none of this. Well, you know I I gotta I gotta go to Hawaii and get my head together. <laughs> I mean, anybody still say get the head together? Or is that like is that that's like a million years ago? I, I, okay. Um, <laughs> Do you guys outline much? We you know when we first started it was all those index cards. You know you walk into the room and there they were. And then there were parenthood, there was, there was each individual character had their own, but now we just kind of let it unfold. Yeah, we have a little more faith fever pitch, which we, which we rewrote many times. Uh, we, we, we never actually put it on no. cards. Uh, we always kind of knew where we wanted to go and were willing to kind of see how we got there. Because we also know that we will be honest, that, that we'll, we'll get to a point and go, uh, well, that's not so good, you know, and, and rethink it. Uh, how much discussion then happens before you go, let's start dialogue? B b per scene? No, b before you start the movie. A lot. A lot of it is enforced dialogue, you know, because all the meetings you have to take and all the people you have to get the material and you know there, there are notes there are notes from everybody and you have you've got notes from the producer you've got notes from the studio you've got notes from potential direct I mean it's so I, I we sort of feel like they've almost outlined the movie for us in a way I, I don't mean literally it's not it's not a coherent outline but uh, weeks of discussion and note taking have 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 taken place even before we're left alone to do it. it, it becomes kind of, you know, kind of an organizational process, and and even dialogue. But we've we've certainly heard the character's voice by then. Uh, I mean, again, fever pitch because it's sort of fresh in our minds. We had we had talked about the movie so many times without actually physically outlining it that there were were hundreds of lines of dialogue floating through our heads that had, because we... They just so knew him. Because we could hear them so so clearly. And at one point, there was actually a scene that was in the movie, didn't get in the movie, but was filmed. It was actually shot, spent an entire day <laughs> shooting, went in the rough cut, everybody looked at it, said, why is that scene in this movie? <laughs> it accomplishes nothing. It's a repetition of two other scenes in the movie and we thought about it and we said I actually remember it's because when we pitched it at the studio it, everybody laughed really hard <laughs> <laughs> and it just stuck in our minds forever because of it it wasn't until we actually you know on a day shooting is expensive <laughs> so we had actually it, it shot it and showed up on screen <laughs> before he just said that this it doesn't function in the film at all uh, we're going to open up in a minute, so people have questions, start thinking about what they're going to be, because we'll send some mics around. Um, are there things that you guys rely on the other guy for, like in the process or in the room, like strengths that you may not have yourself or the other guy has? 
It's certainly not in any formal way. I've always, among many other attributes, I've always felt that I, I will never, we, we will never have a spot where we can't come up with a joke because Babalu is there. <laughs> so I know uh, among the many, many things he's, he's capable of doing, I knew back from our TV days that you they would never, we'd never just, no, we couldn't think of a joke. <laughs> he's, he's, he's never been, you know, stuck. He, right. he, 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 he just, he, he thinks in perfectly formed jokes. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, he, he really does. Uh, the, the, um, I don't know, he would have to, I would say, he, this is a very bright man, and he, in his younger days, he could contain the entire movie in his noodle, and he's a puzzle doer. I, on the other, I, aside from the, I like to add the quirkiness to the characters. You know, Daniel Stern sleeping to avoid his wife. It's just, it's just something. <laughs> yeah, I but that to me was brilliant. That to me, <laughs> that to me was a brilliant, brilliant quirk. He came with that, 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 he, that at a party he pretends to be sleeping so he doesn't have to talk to his wife. That, that I mean, you knew their whole marriage just without a law, without dialogue. I just thought that was great. So that's, that's, you know. Yeah, but I, I and funny. He's funny. So you know, he's definitely, you know, just a bright, bright man who can just, you know. Great overview. Yeah, I, yeah I, I'm I'm the one who will who will who will take a chance on a on like doing like a, an arc of the next few scenes and, and just make a mishmash of it. But I'm happy to just and I, throw I, it up into the air and go. Maybe it goes, uh, you know, A D B F C E. You know, <laughs> something like that. Till, so, but I'll I'll sort of contribute another, that to the process. I know another strength. Well, whatever it is, is a schizophrenia of not only being an internal writer but being external, sitting in the audience, watching the thing we're writing, going. He's very we're, good, we're, he's very good at feeling the audience, very good. So, so mm -hmm. that, you know, that I, I definitely. I think, I think that's. Uh, I, don't get I, don't get, I don't get lost in. in, in, in You're inside of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, I think that dance between being in and then out and in and out is a, the thing to try to understand, you know, because I think it's so much both of those things. Um, do we have to, uh, how do we do this? Do we just throw the mic up around or? I'm just gonna literally throw it now. <laughs> this gentleman here's got a, got a question. Also, if you don't get the mic and you wanna ask the question, I can repeat it back so it appears on. I appreciate very much your talking about the process on a daily basis. Could you go into some detail about writing a scene the process that you use, do you start from the end and go backwards? What, what exactly do you do? Well, start from the end and go backwards. I mean, yes, we, we, we think we know what has to be accomplished in the scene, what, what, what the scene has to do to, to keep, you know, to, to, for, for character and story. Uh, uh, so to, in that sense, we, in that sense, every scene starts from the end, yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, we, we write we write very improvisationally. We write out loud. We we don't you know we don't take scenes apart with each other and you know and write them and then swap them and, and pencil each other up. We really try to uh, improvise the scene. Um, it, it's very dialogue oriented. I mean, we we really um, try to be in character. Uh, we don't get dressed up, but I mean, <laughs> <laughs> once in league, <laughs> and I got a bruise, right? Here. We, uh, but I, but I mean, uh, I mean, we we really are trying to. Uh, uh, it it's it, it's very audible, you, you know. I mean, I mean, it, it it's. Uh, and we. we it, it's very important to us that um, when I first started writing TV, I, did, I promise this won't take long. The, um, but it's a key. It's, it's a key. key. Is this the Jack Clark? No, this is the Jack Clark story. Key. He knows how all my stories start. This is a, this um, is a key. A <laughs> key. The, the, uh, that old married couple that yes. finishes the story. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I didn't know anything. I, I, I was going to be. A, I wanted to be a joker. When, when I start, you know, I, I read little jokes, little like sketches and jokes and things. And then I, I got a job on the Odd Couple, and you'd write like script scenes, you know, and you'd 
write a scene and I'd be very happy because the scene had like four or five good jokes in it. And I'd go, oh, they're going to be funny doing this. It's going to be funny. This is the Jack Klugman, Tony Randall odd couple. It, it, ask someone. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, um, uh, ask your parents. Yes. <laughs> and and, uh, and, and <laughs> we'd write it and, uh, and uh, Jack would say to me, uh, uh, he'd read the scene, he'd go, uh, what do I want? I go, what? And then he would lean, get this close to me and scream, what do I want? <laughs> and and uh, th that's actually how I learned to write. I'm serious. <laughs> Absolutely serious. And I'll take from that, the biggest failing of young writers today, when we read it, or I read it, we both read it, you go, it's not what what the character wants, it's what you want the character to do to get you to the next scene. Why is he doing this? Why is he saying that? Well, because, that? I know because I need to get to the next scene. No, no, I understand why you want him to say it. Why does he want to say it? What does he want in this scene? What is his goal, her goal? What, what, what are they trying to accomplish? Did not, uh, unless it's a very specific situation where the only thing the character is trying to accomplish is to be funny. Yeah. And then I want to get him into that tank of eels. Yeah. I know you want to get him into that tank of eels, but well, why does he want to get him into yeah. yeah. it, it, it's, it's in, in very few scenes is a character's motivation, I want to be funny. It, it, it's, and and it, it's, that's really where every scene we're writing is coming from, is what, what is the intention? What is the agenda? What, what, what do people want? Even the guy. And, and, you know, uh, people far smarter and more experienced than we have, have said the same thing. You know, if you read, uh, going back to Frank Capra and beyond, he would, he would talk about, you know, the, 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 the fifth newspaper reporter who shouted at, at, at the guy, what, they only had the one line, what does he want? What is he trying to accomplish? What is his intention in, in this scene? Every, every hopefully, if, if the, it's a character guy just comes to deliver the sandwiches. What, what does, what's he trying to, is he in a hurry? Is he done? Does he hate his job? Does he like his, you know, it's it just, we, just trying to keep life going, going in, in, in the scene. Uh, as I say, we know with what, what the scene has to, has to get to, but it, it has to get there. The, the characters have to push it there. To me, a bad character, is a character who is always playing his character. Like, oh, he's a nerdy guy, he's a shy guy, he's a nervous guy, he's an angry guy. And it just, it's called the arrow. This is who I am. Nobody in the world is like that. I mean, where they're just, yes, I'm shy all the time. You know, it, it just, you know, and, and they, they write those scenes, especially early in the movie, to show he's, he's Oh, look how intimidated he is. This is going to be a movie about him not being so shy and intimidated anymore. You know, I, I just, I can't stand those characters. I just can't stand them. Uh, but I won't name the movies because I don't. But they rhyme with. Uh, while we move on, go, we'll, we'll sort of progressively go back. Uh, while we're doing that, I have a question for you. Are there things that you do differently now, just specifically in terms of the writing craft, that you, um, you, Things that you started off doing that you do differently now, more efficiently, the things, you, the message you don't get into, alleys you don't go down now. <coughs> no. I mean, no. you know, we just spent a year adapting a book. If, at this point, you'd figure, well, we get, no. No, we, we worked on it, I mean, just months and months and months, and, you know, and that got the same, turned it in, and again, I, I think you guys have gone in the wrong direction on this. You know, and just go, okay, all right. And go, we, we'd l rather it go in this direction. And it was just what we didn't want to do. They would change the point of view. They just change the point of view from an adult to a child. And you just went back. We just went back. And man, we just banged up because we loved this movie. We loved this story. And we just banged on it for, for several days in a row. And, and just went, you know, it's going to be okay, and I, and I swear, I, I swear, it, it, we 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 actually do feel that it's better. We just we, it we, we it would have been okay the other way too, but it, it made us just hold everything up to a light because we were just so 
severely tested on, on, on how to fix it, but I didn't feel like, oh, well, now we know how to do it, and 20 years ago we couldn't have done it. It, it, it was just pure sweat. There are like 30 drafts of Splash, which is like 20 years ago, and, and there'll be, they're not all full drafts. I mean, I, they're not like one to 100 drafts. Some of them are just you know rewrites of like a 10 or 12 page section of the movie. Uh, and, and there'll be, if by the time this movie ever gets made, if it, if it does, not even by the time, if you're out of your assistant's office, which she's working on it, she is actually like a joke. I mean, it's, it's like a joke. She is, she is surrounded, boxed in like by a hedge of, of drafts, where just her head is sticking like a foxhole. And, and I, I'm, not, I'm not kidding. I mean, four feet high all the way around her. OK. Uh, you had referred to when you're in the editing room, you have such a meticulous eye insofar as the lines go. Um, being that you are, I guess what we'll call, non-producing writers, I'm curious at what point in your career were you actually allowed in the editing room? First movie. First movie. Night shift. Because Ron's a friend. Because how do we describe ourselves? The best behaved writers in show business. <laughs> 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 we, see, and I know where he's going also. <laughs> we, we, we never make asses of ourselves on the set or in the editing room. On the set, we never, you know, he said, oh, he's supposed to say the. <laughs> we don't give those kinds of notes. In the editing room, as I say, we, it's never, you were a joke. You know, it, it's, uh, Ron had us come in because uh, he had never directed a comedy before. And he, he's not, um, he, he's not, he is not born down by massive ego. So he said, get those two Jews. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one, thing I, one thing I will say about, about the way we work, um, we always conduct ourselves as if we are partners rather than employees. We present ourselves that way. Um, we don't talk about how many drafts we're doing and that you have to call our agent because we've, we've run over our, you've run over your allotment for how many drafts you can get from us. Uh, and I know this is a big issue in the Guild. People talk about free drafts and getting, you know, they, they don't turn into the studio yet. The producer and the director keep sending you back. And, but uh, through, at first through ignorance, and now it is actually a, a, a practice, um, uh, as long as we are working with people whom we uh, like and respect, which is almost all the time, uh, we, 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 just, we just keep writing. And, and so we be, they begin to think of us as partners rather than employees. And we've, we've I, I can't think of a time where we weren't welcome everywhere. Uh, on, on a, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> whisper, whisper. <laughs> no, no, you did not get the filming. But no, but, but you know what? But no ego alone. Look, they're screening the movie. For, for audiences, you know, it's not like we're geniuses. You go, this is the, this is the second time, there's no laugh there. Yeah, we, we, are, we are very much also from the school of if three people say you're sick, lie down. You know, Billy Wilder you know. said that. <laughs> hey, Billy Wilder, don't be boring. There it is, don't be boring. No, I, I used, used to drive me crazy in TV. This would drive me crazy. Don't do this, because um, you don't want to drive me crazy. The, the, you, you'd, a writer would write a joke, and we'd go to the read-through. And it wouldn't play. And he go, he read that crappy. And I go, well, yeah, I go, okay, I guess he did. First run through, does the joke. Uh, it's, it's, uh, the other guy moved on while he was saying it. That's why I think I left. Okay, third time, uh, something. It got, no, it's over. It's over. We write a new joke. Are you ever going to write a new joke the rest of your career? Or was that the last joke? You know, let's, let's move on. You know, so what Bob was saying is, is we've, we've always, people have always been comfortable with us around the set or the, because, because we, we, we don't, you know, we, we don't protect our, our we, don't, we don't have these little sort of protective moments. Somebody tells you a terrible idea. And 
How rich are they? How rich are they? They're right on your side. Well, we've, <laughs> we've had that. We've had that. Yeah. Um, yeah. A splash. Someone said, you know what? Why don't they meet in a grocery store? As opposed to her finding we had, his wallet and 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 no, I, the way I mean he's not he's not kidding. We, we we wrote splash in the studio immediately, put it and turn around. Said no, this is no good. And and uh, we were trying to sell it. Ron and Brian and, and Bob and I were taking this movie all over town with a script, with, yeah. with a script, trying to sell it. And we went into a company production. Company, said you will make it, but and they gave us like a whole bunch of notes that we just thought were just grotesque. And. Uh, and, and in a private moment, Ron and Brian said to us, is there any way you can accommodate these notes? And we said, please, no. It, it's really awful. And I said, OK, we'll, 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 just, we'll just keep shopping it. And, and that's why we still work in offices up in their place, because we love them. <laughs> you know? uh, so the, the, there's, a, there's a point at which you do but assuming you don't have a partner next to you, like, you know, that they can take away. Some, you're in a situation where you need to act fairly quickly. Let's say you have to rewrite a scene for, for the next day. Well, they, they have a bad idea. How do you, A, convey that to them? Do you convey that to them? And then what do you do? Well, you get out of television. Because <laughs> uh, that's what you, you're but saying. Let me, let me, features let me, let me, you have let to have the let next let me, day let me, sometimes. Can, you, can I tell yeah. you about a luxury that we're, that's afforded to us? We usually, before a movie starts, two or three weeks, we have rehearsal as if it was a play. So to avoid a scene like that, they, they, they put down tape, we sit and we go through every scene. It, it was less informal on, on Fever Pitch. We sat in, in the Farrelly Brothers Barn. We read it with the actors, and then we went back to work. And we talked about every line before we started. Uh, Gary Marshall, my, my, my mentor to whom I owe everything, um, uh, you say that, that don't, don't listen to the studio or the network when they're in TV, their solution. Listen to their problem. Right. F figure out what it is that, that's bothering them and then come up with your own solution because you're better than they are. You're smarter. You're a better writer than they are. So they sometimes feel compelled, especially when it has to be done quickly, to offer you a solution. Right. Don't take that solution. But do try to hear what the, what the issue is that motivated them to pitch you such a bad solution. And, and uh, I've, I've, you know, that's, that has actually gotten us out of more than a couple of tight spots. Fever Pitch was a very peculiar adaptation in that Fever Pitch, his book, was not even truly a, a novel. It was, it was a reminiscence. Uh, it didn't have other characters, really. It didn't have, it wasn't romantic or funny or, I mean, it, it was just, it, it was a diary. It was a diary, really. It was Nick Hornby writing about how much he loved uh, Arsenal, the, the, the British soccer team. That, that, that of which he was a fan. So there really was almost nothing to adapt except they, they had made a British movie, so that was probably closer, where, where he himself had adapted it uh, as a romantic drama, not a romantic comedy. It, it made no attempt to be a comedy, but about how this guy's uh, love affair with his soccer team made it difficult for him to sustain a romance. Uh, so uh, there was almost nothing other than the thematics. He had some brilliant, brilliant uh, uh, moments of his kind of sticking up for himself and right. talking about why he did not feel being a fanatic was anything he should have to apologize for or feel diminished about. Uh, and, and we, 
and those were great. But uh, as great as Nick Hornby is, and I, I a huge admirer, there, there, there was actually almost nothing for us to grab onto as far as, 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 far as structure or, or scenes or, or anything like that. It, it, was, uh, it was almost like a non-adaptation adaptation. Let's try and move back and get some questions from uh, this gentleman here in the center. You? Yeah, hi, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Night Shift, and I want to say I think it's a very funny movie. My question, my, my question is, um, first of all, how did you come up with those two characters, Bill Blazjowski and the one that Henry Winkler plays? And second question is, do you ever write um, for stars in mind? Because it seemed like Henry Winkler was almost cast against type for that role. And did you know of Michael Keaton at the time, or was this just a pure instance where the character just fit the actor perfectly? Because I think that was his funniest role ever. Michael was magnificent in that part. Um, uh, Night Shift, as I said, we, we created those characters because we were literally trying to think, how could we have gotten into this predicament? And the, the Henry Winkler character, Chuck Lumley? Chuck that, Lumley. Yeah. Um, that was that was how we picture ourselves, uh, just easily intimidated, a easily pushed around. A gentleman hiding from life, literally. Yeah, uh, and the Bill Blaze Jowski character is he was we did a wonderful thing. We tried to take that kind of person who frightens us, <laughs> but kind of disarm him in the sense of making him more funny than dangerous. Right. But he's still the kind of person we don't want to spend a great deal of time with, <laughs> uh, especially in his natural form, which is not funny when you actually meet that, that, that type of person. So that, that's how the characters were created. Uh, we had no idea who would be cast in that. I think you know they wanted the, uh, John Belushi to play the Michael Keaton character. Um, you know, uh, as they wanted in those days, John Belushi to play it, which ironically, he died during the filming. So if we had gotten them, we'd have been screwed real good. But uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, and, and uh, Henry, we had no idea. Henry was, uh, you know, was obviously our friend uh, and Ron's friend and kind of did it, uh, you know, because uh, we, we asked him to. Um, uh, Michael, we, we actually recommended Michael yep. for the part. Uh, uh, Brian and Ron had never heard of Michael. We, um, that was his breakout role. I, I directed I, Michael once in, a t in an episode of a TV show. And you? I saw him. There was a, Tony Randall had a TV show where he was a judge. And at night, to earn some money, he was teaching at Ed's Law School. And one of the students was Michael. And he was so funny <laughs> that you just couldn't forget him. And then, so then, then. And then, then I said, yeah, I directed this guy in an episode of a, of a he, he and Jim Belushi, it was a show called Working Stiffs. And I directed one episode of it. And, and I just thought he was great. And, and uh, but then, then, then we had written the script and they went into the casting process. And as, as fun it was writing the script, it was the most depressing point. Because every night we'd go back to Ron Howard's house and he, they had audition tapes. Hundreds. I'm not kidding. Like a hundred, and know. everybody was bad in the part, and, and we took it to heart. We just said, "Well, it's our first movie. We, we probably failed. don't know we how failed. to write a part. Yeah. We don't know how to write something that's actable. We're bad." <laughs> and then he showed us, "Well, here's that guy you guys liked," and he showed us Michael's reading, and and Babalu literally ran up to the TV screen and kissed it. <laughs> he God's actually on, did. God's honest truth. <laughs> and, 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 uh, but then, 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 and they started shooting the movie. The lab company, they, they wanted to fire. Him. They wanted to fire him. They said he's too weird. He's, <laughs> he's too weird. He only ad libbed really one line in the movie that wasn't in the movie, and, and it was. If, if uh, I know, I may be again talking to air, but if if you, you saw it, yeah. it's a. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He gets off and the I'm subway. Saying and I'm single. Yeah. And he, you know, he, says, he, says, he says, we're going to be love brokers. And he goes outside the window, and he does this thing. He's wearing his weird glasses, and, and he comes into the window. And he goes, weird. love brokers. He does this thing. And right there at the lab cup, he said, get rid of him. <laughs> right at that moment, he said, he's going to frighten the audience. <laughs> And, and, and Ron, you know, just fought for him and, and, uh, and, and, and didn't let him ad lib much the rest of the, rest of the movie. <laughs> and, but we loved him. I mean, we were, you know, when, when we're with 
guys like that, we love them to go. I mean, these guys are funny. But as far as the last part of your question, look how good my concentration is. Uh, the last part of your question, uh, we have virtually never written with actors in mind except the times we worked with Billy, Crystal. And, and Lovitz. Oh, yes, Lovitz. And Lovitz and thank you. Yes, yeah, because we, we felt, wrote, you know what? We League felt of like, their own. We felt like it was, a, a, you know, in the 30s, they had these fantastic character actors that you could write. And you go, oh, this is a chance. Yeah, we could just yeah. We said we, we should write Lovitz like he like he's one of those great Warner Brothers or MGM character contract guys, and we, and we wrote the part of the Scout yeah. League of Their Own specifically he, as a favor, also to Penny because he was living in her house. She said, "Please, I need him to move." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't a romance. He just yeah, kind of just showed up and fought yeah. there. So she said, "Get right, John, a part." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and, and like I said, when we worked with Billy, uh, all, all all the movies we did with Billy were were written for Billy. Let's uh, move on back a bit. Uh, back there, then we'll move. The red. Hi. Um, how much do you know about the characters before you write them? How much do we know about the characters before we write them? For instance, in Parenthood, all the characters are so dimensional. Um, how much? How much of that dimension do you start out with? I thought you were going to say well? dimension. <laughs> yeah. Uh, boy, you're picking an example where we probably knew our characters better than in any movie we've ever written. To a point that we were, uh, we, 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 was, we was so deep up the backside of every, of every one of those you characters. Know what, and you know why? Because we, we, in our real lives, we knew most of those people in some form. Yeah. Yeah, we, we really know, did. His cousin, a sister-in-law. I mean, just you know, your kid, someone else. So so yeah, we, we, we were we we real we really felt confident of our of our ground there. But so but to make a more typical example, um, like I say, if if we know anything before we start, it's it's the it's it's our lead character. Uh, like I said, whether it, whether it's the woman in Oregon who plays ball, or, or, or the, the 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 two people in Fever Pitch, or uh, that's what we know probably better than where the story is going. Uh, we have to know where the story is going. We have to, but 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 the work that we gravitate to, that comes naturally to us, is is being able to. Is, is, is knowing at least that first one or two characters. And, and like I say, Parenthood was an extreme example because we, we were all over those characters. Maybe you can talk a little bit when you say knowing a character. I think a lot of writers who go to film school or early writers think knowing a character means writing a long character bio. Does it mean having a cerebral understanding or does it mean a kind of visceral? Is it more a feel for a character? What does knowing a character mean? What do you think? I, I I get in it. I, I literally, if, it, if I was an actor, it would be, I'm, I'm, I would put on the outfit. I put on the, put on the skin. I have to hear them. I have, I have to be able to hear them. If, if we can't write early on while we're pitching it, if we can't write dialogue in his or her voice. And usually, you know what, when someone pitches it to something, and if we can start talking in that voice, after, if we leave the meeting, like Billy would, you know, and it starts flowing, you go, I think we're in a fertile area. But when we, yes, when, when we pitch the movie to whoever, to, to whomever we have to pitch a movie to for it to become a movie, we, we are talking in the character's voice. We, we, we are constantly in, improvising and, 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 and telling the story through, through the character's dialogue. Uh, it, it, it's just how we write. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, you know, we, I, we, I've often said only half jokingly, we should have been in radio. You know, it's, 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 it's we just, we, uh, at least the, I, I, I uh, ev everything about a character comes through what I can hear. Okay, uh, over here, sir. Yeah, you.
Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're pretty traditional. We, we talk about three acts. Um, you know, we, we do do that. Uh, uh, so we, we, we're a little different. We, we really like a, a full, strong first act. Um, and our premises don't kick in till way late. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I mean, nobody could believe how long it took to get those characters on a cattle drive at City Slickers. <laughs> I mean, no one, just, no one could believe it. How long is it, actually? I, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's counterintuitive to how long it should be. Page 104. No, I mean, I mean but it, it's... No, but we're, here, here's the thing. I give a pat on the head for us. We're smart enough to put in a scene at the beginning. They're running in Pamploma. You go, all right, folks, this is funny. Be patient. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay? We, we, we got your yeah, attention. We know how to write an entertainment. You know, it's, it's, we're, we're, it's coming. Oh, we did the same thing in Splash. We, we, in, in our construction, the mermaid doesn't show up for, I don't know, 40 minutes into the movie, so we gave you that little teaser at the beginning where they met his children. The, uh, just just so that people wouldn't go, did I wander into the wrong theater? I thought this was a, <laughs> my friend said I'd love the mermaid movie. Where's the, <laughs> so, uh, the, the, so but we love the first act. I mean, that, that means a lot to us. We, we really want to know our characters and, and develop a relationship before the the quote-unquote comedy premise kicks in. And that's the bitch act. That's the one-sheet act. Hmm. That's the toughest act, Russ, where everybody says, oh, well, we know that'll be funny, because that's what we've sold. You know, uh, and, and, and that, that, that to us is sort of the, usually the least interesting kind of act. We have, to, we have to find a way to make that kind of really be surprising and, and, and make it, you know, so that somebody would say, oh, I knew every joke that was going to be in that. As soon as I heard the premise, I knew what it would be. Um, but, I mean, it's, as far as constructing the story, we, we are trying to, um, I mean, we, we are doing introduction, complication, resolution. I mean, it's that old, it, it, and we're aware of it. We, 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 we're not writing avant-garde, uh, kind of, you know, out of sequence, uh, screenplays were very, I mean, Parenthood was probably the toughest because there were four separate constructions. Uh, so we, we constructed them separately as if each was like a, a mini movie. A mini movie. So there were like three, oh, I don't know, three uh, 25 minute movies and a 45 minute movie. What does that add up to? <laughs> <laughs> That's two hours, isn't it? Uh, Seventy-five hundred. That sounds like one hundred and twenty. <laughs> um, so you know, but so the, that that was more complicated. Did this answer anything? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm thinking too about your third act. Do you, you envision where you're going and how things are going to resolve? Yes, yes, yes. We are definitely thinking where how where we're going and how it's going to resolve. We won't start until uh, until we, then. Yeah, slickers, we okay. They they got a herd. We know somehow they got to bring this herd in themselves. Yeah, from the very beginning, we said we have to construct a circumstance where these three guys bring in the herd without supervision. We knew that's what we wanted. That that appealed to us. We enjoyed that idea, and and so the entire middle of the movie was constructed to bring us to that point. It was a comedic murder mystery. Yeah. One by one, we eliminate. We have to eliminate the characters, and that's hard for us because we don't we don't write that kind of plotting easily. Well, but how would you get rid of the two? How do you, would you get rid of the nice people? How do you get rid of the mean people? How do you do? Who drives who away? What causes what to happen? We're not mystery writers, you know. We, we don't. So th those things were, that was very grinding for us to come up with that. But we knew that's what we wanted. I mean, we absolutely knew that's what we wanted. League of Their Own. We knew we wanted to get those two sisters on opposite teams by the third act. We knew that. We knew we wanted them to have to go against each other at the end. Um, you know, uh, fever pitch. I mean, we knew we, we didn't have it in the first draft, but we did know that he would make some sort of big gesture and she would panic and come after him, but we didn't have it yet that it would happen at the ballpark.
seems obvious. Why we were actually going to do it in an office, a, a, law, a, a lawyer's, lawyer's office, lawyer's office, where he was going to sell his tickets to a to a to a guy in office, and then somebody somebody who did, had nothing. Somebody no, said I was at this. the ballpark with my wife, and there was some schmuck on the field, and I go running across the field. That's how we. Should, that's what we should do. What's wrong with us? <laughs> but, <laughs> but but we always but we always knew that it would that that's how the love story would right. would would come out, and that. We, we we would have to we would have to build it towards that. Uh, no, we we we, all, we always know what what we want to do for last scene. Uh, we should probably wrap up with a few more questions. Uh, this gentleman in the blue shirt here has had a. How do you deal in terms of character? How do you deal with an unsympathetic character to make? I mean, I think you know what I mean. It depends why they're unsympathetic. You know, there's a, there's a thing that goes on in the, in the screening process. Um, somebody will say, um, okay, I'll, I'll just go to parenthood for Larry, a second. This is Tom, the Tom Hulls character. Yeah, people say, uh, we don't like him. Or something they would say about the Jason Robards character. Oh, he's a sourpuss. Everybody else in the movie is happy, and he's always unhappy. We don't like him. And the studio will say to you, get a shot of him smiling, or don't cut to so many shots of him frowning. The, the audience is scoring him low. They don't like him. <laughs> and you go, that's OK. Now, on the other hand, if they had said, I don't like Steve, or Steve Martin, the character, or they said, I'm, I'm not sympathetic to Diane Weiss' character. She just seems crabby and complaining, whining about her kids, and she doesn't seem like a very good mother. I go, well, we have to fix that, because they're, they're, that was not our intention. It's not our intention. I don't care if, if a character is unsympathetic for the right reasons. That's why I said Jack Lemon in the apartment. There are many things about that character that are very unsympathetic. He's a, he, like I say, he, he's, a, he's a coward. He's a, he's a finagler. He, 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 he's, and, and I, I don't care that he's, he's unsympathetic. He's the woman that he has a crush on. Uh, you know, Use his own apartment to, to screw another guy. I mean, he, it's awful, but, but it, it's, he's just, he's human, and he's unsympathetic for all the right reasons. And so, and, and so I don't care. And if somebody is just completely unsympathetic, I also don't care if that's, if, if that, that's not what it's about, unless, I'm, I'm trying to get, we're trying to get something across, of, and, and the, the fact that the character is unsympathetic can't get case, it across. And in the case of Jason Rope, we know he's going to take in the little boy. You know, his, this, his kind of, his, his the, the, yes, Tom Hulse's But Tom Hulse's character will never be reclaimed. No, he, you will never like him any better at, at the end than, than you do. And, and, and as my uncle used to say, cockamoon. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we yeah, don't care. Cock yeah. <laughs> Okay, uh, over here in the corner over there. Um, you said you always know the endings of your movie. That you always know the endings of your movie, but I understand that on, on the theater, theater pitch that, that you had probably written it differently, and then when Boss of One, you had to rewrite it. I was wondering what that first version was like for you. Well, uh, he's talking because in, in Fever Pitch, obviously the Red Sox uh, year before last won the World Series while we were shooting the movie. <laughs> so the, the original of the movie was they were playing out another losing season, and he realized, oh, my God, I get nothing from this. They, I love them, but they don't love me back. And, you know, and she comes to him because she realized how much he loves her. And it was, it, it was a very nice ending, but it, it just... It, we, we didn't feel like it, it wouldn't work that way, but it, it just would have, it just seemed stupid. It was, it was a, to continue with that ending, it was ignoring the elephant in the corner. The fact that everybody in the world knew the Red Sox had just won the World Series. It was a movie about a Red Sox fan. But it didn't change uh, the ending. Her running across the field uh, to stop him from selling his tickets was written still with the idea that they, that they had let him down again and had another disappointing season. Uh, did we ever rewrite the ending to any other movie of ours? I think I don't think so. I think that's one play we always know what that should well, the be. Night, in Night Shift, the first one and only note we got from Alan Ladd Jr., who was who was the head of Fox, but then he was at a Ladd company. The only comment he said, 
are you happy with the ending? Yeah, but that was real early in the process. Yeah, and you go, uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. But that was very but, early but, in the process. By the, by the time we had a shooting script, yeah. that was the ending. But that was the only uh, sadly that, that, that we actually shot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, um, we'll just take these last three here since they're end up. Whoever gets the mic first, there you go. Okay, hi. Uh, I, I don't mean to be a troublemaker or anything, but um, you would said there was there was like a couple of instances where you had broken the spine and, and you knew it. Oh, absolutely. And I want to know, did you know it when it was breaking, or did you have to wait a couple of days or a couple of weeks to realize that, oh my goodness, look what we did? I don't think we knew. No. <laughs> and at one particular point, it's a movie, the character, the, the, the audience, you can just feel it. The audience is going with it, and a character does something that yeah. Is that it's gung ho. The character lies. He lies, and, and it was unnecessary. And he takes the movie in another direction. An but you know, we're not that smart. Yeah. I, I, and I'm not being I'm, I'm not being a smartass when I say that. We get a lot of good ideas from other people, from actors and directors and studio people, and we go with them, and they've made a bunch of our movies better. So even sometimes when we go, hmm, we 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 don't. No, it's not like we're, we're holding our nose while we're right. doing it. You're going, there's merit in this. It, it does have, it does present an additional positive quality that the movie previously didn't have. But then when it got on the screen, you said it wasn't worth that. But we didn't know it uh, uh, in the moment. Uh, we, we don't think we're the only ones working on a particular movie who have good ideas. Uh, so, and, and uh, that, that, was, that was a pretty good example. Although it didn't, I don't feel like that movie is ruined. But it definitely made the movie less enjoyable. Yeah. Hey, Ray, you know, I don't remember who, yeah. Um, I think that Mr. Saturday, Mr. Saturday Night is one of the most underrated films. Oh, the thank you, my God, oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> And, that, uh, that's that's our very favorite of all our unsuccessful movies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Billy Crystal directed that, and 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 beautifully. It's both hilarious and moving. Uh, every time I watch it, I just wanted to hear absolutely any anecdote you had about working with Billy Crystal, especially uh, in that movie. Uh, I I don't know. I'm tr I'm trying to do we do we have anecdotes? No. But he, you know what? He was in the makeup and directing. The man worked like an animal. But it was, you know, it was. It was. A it, was the, it was the love of his life. Yeah. It was the. It, 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 it was the. It was the labor of love. He, he, he wore. He, was, he wore a prosthetic while he made that movie, where you couldn't see one. To to feel more like what he imagined this guy was. <laughs> Does that qualify as an anecdote? <laughs> uh, <laughs> he he was so he knew this guy so completely. It, it was I, I that was, we as I say of all the movies that people did not flock to see that I think that's our best. Could have been nicer. Yeah. Oh, that was yes. Thank you. That was. That, that, that was lovely. And, and David Payne was nominated for an Academy Award, so it was not, you know, a completely overlooked, you know, just, just, j you know, just fell through the cracks kind of movie, but uh, uh, it, it, it didn't do business. I, I imagine I speak for a lot of people in the audience here when I say you, you folks on the stage have us in a very delicious double bind here because on one level or another, we're probably very envious of you to have a, a secure position in not so secure. <laughs> Not so secure, my friend. <laughs> my, my question is, uh, the other part of the double bind is that uh, a lot of us here, I imagine, are busy writing s spec scripts. And it's a little bit different approach. We're in a new generation, some of us, where we're inundated with so many books, so many millions of screenwriters with whom we're competing. And uh, the writer's boot camp and the the Creative Screenwriters Convention at the, the Convention Center, et cetera, year after year. 
Um, my question is, what advice do you have for uh, beginning screenwriters in terms of two areas? Number one, struggling with the uh, back and forth between structure and arcs and all the structure that we do, and, and finding that voice for all the characters we're, we're obligated to write for. And secondly, if we're writing a, a romantic comedy or any comedy, when do you know when to stop in terms of how funny should it be to, to sell the thing? I'm not sure I understand that last part. Um, uh, it, it, it's so you're saying this script is too funny. Let's not buy it. Oh, and then it then it evolved. My partner says, "No, we're going to sell this if it's a romantic comedy." Um, so we're taking it from a more dramatic love story to a romantic comedy. And so how, how I've, hard I've, do you I've, sell it? I've, I've never believed in trying to outguess the market. I've always believed in writing that which you love. That, I mean, for us, it was easy. As, as Bob Lou would tell you, you're, you're, the, the movie that started you on this, on this path, you're, the, the dream. Some like it on. Which is just funny. And, and so for us, it was not, it's not a question. Uh, we knew what we loved. And so, which is certainly not to say that we have ever successfully emulated Some Like It Hot, but we knew what we were trying for because we knew what we loved. But we didn't do it because he said, funny comedy sells. Funny is what? Romantic comedies, that's what's all offbeat, that's what's selling this year. Kids movies, young, this, that. We always wrote. Uh, not because we're so pure or we, we we're above it all or, or anything like that. We don't know how to do anything else. We're not strategists. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think you combine writing with, with strategy. Uh, I, I think you write the kind of movies that you see and go, I would like to write a movie like that. I, I would like to write a movie half as good as that. Well, you know, seriously, it, well, it's Hannah and her sisters. Yeah, so we saw that and said, "Boy, we should. All right, that would be great." And then that's how parenthood started. Yeah, we saw Hannah and her sisters, Woody Allen movie from the from the mid the late eighties, and said, "Wow, that was deft." He 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 did these multiple stories with a family. It's not what we would do. We wouldn't write those. We don't know those characters. He's writing characters he knows. They're they're foreign to us. But and 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 we and, and we tried to do it not because it. So there were, there were 70 movies that year that made more money than Hannah and her, and her sisters, uh, including Parenthood, as it turned out. <laughs> but, but uh, uh, you know, it was always, we, we were in love with a kind of movie and said, boy, we, we'd like to, like to write something half, half as good as that, uh, and, and wrote, what, wrote the kind of movie we love. Uh, I, I don't, you know, it, it was it was never, you know, like what to. I I I think, you know, also as I, as I, say sometimes is is you know when you're writing, spec script, you you should be. Interesting quickly. People make the mistake of thinking that somebody who reads your spec script, that it is actually their job to finish it. You know what? Because look, it's I'm not. Up, we're up and imagine, you know, they have those weekend readers. They have 10 scripts. They, they, we see them Friday. They go, they go home, home with, with that you know, stack. With a, it, and and it, it, is, it is nobody's job to do a good job reading your script. And then your, your, your script is going to be boiled down to a, a two-page synopsis. So... You know, it, it, it's uh, you, you want you want some some clarity, and as I say, you want to be interesting early. I think people want to feel they're in good hands when they're reading it. You know, if it's a comedy, they want to feel they're in solid hands. This is going to be funny. It's well written. It's not the script itself isn't insecure. It's not trying too hard. The writer's not trying too hard. It's just that fine line. And 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 and, and it's specific. It's not. All over the place, or, or attempting the, every, all different things. Yes, well, the Tolstoy, to drop a name, said uh, the, uh, honest, emotional, and specific. Uh, and and uh, and even now, when we do a comedy, we screen it. 
I can't wait for that first laugh in a movie so that just what, what Ed said, so that the audience feels they're in good hands. Just like a reader reading a spec script, the audience in the theater has got to, they've, they've got to feel protected. They've got to feel they're in, they're in good hands. Where, where is this? The, the, they're, they're, they're wandering the, here. Thus, they're wandering. I, I know, but I, it's thus those beginning scenes, the, the pamplum, the running. Yeah. They're laughing, they're relaxing. Okay. They're, they're, they're ready to enjoy the movie. Yeah, it, it's... Because we've written movies, it is like swimming upstream. Just, you, you keep fighting and fighting, they never embrace it. They'll never embrace it. Yeah, it just, it, it just didn't go right. It just didn't start right, and, and they just feel like it's not, they're not in good hands. And, 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 and then you've got jokes that we consider nines that are playing like fives, where in a movie like uh, Splash, where they fall in love with the movie right away. We're writing sixes and they're playing like tens. You know, it, it's just, uh, uh, it, it, it's, well, you said it. You said it very well. They just, just make, make them feel that they're, that they're in good hands. And which you can't fake, unfortunately. Yeah, because if you're floundering around, if it's all like compromises between you and your partner, it, it, it just, uh, I, I feel that, that it, it's, it seeps into the material. We're, we've gone late. We really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much.